now to start focusing on the ground a little bit. We're going to focus, we only got another half an hour or so, so we're going to focus primarily on the attack, the top position person. Um, obviously, we've got all the different experience levels in here. Some of you have a decent amount of jiu jitsu experience. Um, if you train here, I think a lot of you have jiu jitsu schools. So you're at least going to be fairly familiar with having some concept of what to do when somebody's on top of you on attack. Some of you do, some of you don't. Okay, but we have limited time, so let's focus on what to do when you're the top person because this is an MMA clinic. We don't always put as much time if we're thinking purely self defense. In what we do in those situations. Because in self defense, you're probably not attacking somebody on top and bringing down punches very much. So let's focus on that. We don't put as much time into it. And I'm just push. Thank you. So we're going to start. We just hit a takedown, whatever. Maybe I knocked my opponent down, whatever the case may be. We're going to start with my opponent already on the back. Obviously, I'm kind of skipping ahead a little bit here. There are going to be plenty of times where I'm going to get stuck inside of a closed guard. We'll deal with that another time. For right now, we're going to focus on I was able to stay on my feet, or if I was on the ground, Arms open, and I was able to get up to my feet right away. And that's kind of a hallmark of RAM MMA, is we don't spend a lot of time, you'll see this all the time, we don't spend a lot of time just kind of wearily chipping away at each other. When we get up, we get to here, and we're looking to end the fight right away. Now, the downside to this is, under unified MMA rules, my opponent is now allowed to kick me in the head. So I need to be aware of that. Down here, he can't kick me in the head, but he's also much more uh, able to tie me up, stall me, to be able to set threat submissions and so forth. Here I have to worry about him being able to kick me, but it's much more difficult for him to be able to tie me up, and it's also much more difficult for him to be able to catch me in a triangle arm bar, etc. Not impossible, but less likely. So all I want you guys to do is, as you pop up, I'm going to monitor both of his legs. You guys notice I've got one shin against one of his legs. I'm right-handed, so I usually leave my right hand back unless I'm doing something funky. So for right now, I'm leaving my left foot forward, applying a little bit of tension. Not moving it, just a little bit of tension with my left shin the back of his right leg. At the same time, I'm just monitoring. I'm not clamping on, I'm not burning a lot of energy. I'm just monitoring both of his legs. You guys see how, kind of like what Coach Mark was talking about earlier, I'm maintaining that inside position. Kind of like that steering wheel that we were talking about before. And this next uh, option is one that I've used just about every fight I've ever had. I call this the Iron Man Punch. If you guys are at all nerdy like I am, you guys are familiar, of course, with the superhero landing, right? <laughs> The Iron Man version, of course, he lands here. That's exactly what we're doing. Because you see people all the time, they get way too eager about starting to rain down punches on their opponent's head, and they get overcommitted, the guy comes out to their back, something goes wrong, whether they're on their feet or on the ground. My favorite single attack, if I have to pick one, is just a straight cross right into my opponent's gut from on my feet. That sucks when you're on the feet, when the guy can move. When he's stuck against the mat and he can't go anywhere, that's just about a fight ended right there. They don't do much smart after that. So we pop up, I monitor both legs. All I'm doing is pushing hard off of my right foot, turning my right hip, turning my right shoulder, and I'm just driving that right hand straight down into his gut. Even if I were to miss, right, something like that, come to here, I haven't overcommitted, I'm still in good position, I haven't reached out, I'm still nice and balanced over my hips. It's a very high payoff shot and very, very low risk to it. Now, why am I doing that? It's not because I expect that to finish the fight. It, it can lead to it, but it's probably not going to if the guy's good right off the bat. What it does is it forces him to tighten up. He's thinking not about attacking, not about extending his hips, not about tying me up. He's thinking about, oh crap, he just like ruptured my spleen. And he wants to try to protect his body, so his elbows, his knees come in. Here, as soon as I feel that happen, I still have my left hand on the inside, right? I'm going to bring my right foot up. I'm going to step my left leg over his body. Now I've got one foot inside his legs, one foot outside his legs. We put so much work into passing the guard in jiu-jitsu, it's actually really simple in MMA. Punch him until he stops, just to try and mess him up. So I just landed that right hand and I stepped my left foot over. Now I'm gonna rotate 90 degrees. I'm in the exact same stance, except now my left foot and my left shoulder are back. So we punch, step, pivot. Now my left hand goes to his head. But again, I barely have to extend at all because I got such a strong angle on him, he's not really in a good position to be able to tie me up, and I don't have to reach way out here to try to hit him in the head and something can go wrong. Bang! Now I'm going to do the exact same thing I, I did with the right hand, that Iron Man, kick, Iron, Iron Man punch again. Here, now, my right foot comes over, and I drop into the exact same knee on belly that Coach Mark has wind up in after that uppercut throw. So the whole thing, 
Very simple, very effective open guard ground and pound series. We hop up, low stance, monitoring his legs. If I get sloppy here and he kicks me in the face, it's my own fault. Low stance here, monitor both legs. Just block it with my forearms, I'm not holding on. Pivot, one. Step your left leg over. Now pivot the other way. Two, pivot back. Three, step your right leg over. Now I'm right where I want to be. I can do a lot of different stuff. We'll add on to that in a minute. But if I distract him enough with those shots, guard passing with a piece of cake. Comments, questions on that? Don't actually punch your opponent. <laughs> you don't touch with your hand or your knuckles. Talk to them. Make sure you guys are both on the same page so you don't accidentally break anybody's nose tonight. Pretty good? Sir? All right, one, two, three. Two counts, kind of five points to give ourselves some options to play with. Now, where we wind up in the uh, end of that series, which is a shallow knee on belly, makes it very easy, you know, if I decide, man, this guy's actually, man, he protected himself decently well, I wasn't able just to finish the fight right here, he's still moving, he's still defending himself. This makes it very, very easy for me to be able to drop into side control. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to put my left elbow over the top, vice versa, I'm on the other side. I'm going to put my right hand in my pocket, which means that as my right shin and my right foot stop blocking his hip, my right forearm does so. And because this is MMA, instead of just placing my elbow on the mat over the top, I'm trying to drop a nice little chip elbow into the side of his head on the way down. As I put my right hand in my pocket, I kind of chip that elbow into the side of his head. This is one of my favorite side control means of control, whether it's MMA or simply submission grappling that makes my point. Like very difficult, and it gives me a lot of options that I like in both rule sets. One of the things that I like about this is it does allow me to keep hitting with my left elbow, even if it's uh, set rules like for some amateurs that don't allow elbows. It allows me to start punching and hammer fisting with my left hand very easy here, while still keeping him from being able to get away from me because if he's trying to shrimp back into guard, my right arm is in the way. And if he's just trying to get up to his knees, it's pretty easy for me to keep chasing him and keep the pressure on him while I keep chipping away. Now, I want you guys just to be really gentle. Just kind of touch the mat a couple of times. If your opponent wants to give a really tight guard, you can touch. Just be gentle. We're not trying to kill each other. But what I want you guys to think about is when I start doing that, what's he going to do? Well, he's going to try to tighten up. He's going to try to protect his head, which means that he's not reaching down with his arms. He's not really doing a whole lot. He's up high here. Well, because I've got this broken, this posture broken with my right hand, I've got a very, very tempting target there, especially if I'm on this side of his body with my right knee. So I'm chipping that elbow in. I don't care if I really land it or not. I just want to bring his hands up so I can sprawl this hip back, post, post with both hands on the mat for a second. As I come up, I'm smashing that knee as hard as I can get it right into the side of his body. Again, frequently a knockout. It's a very vulnerable target. It's not going anywhere. Bang, I can do a lot of damage from there very easily. And I'm dropping right back. Like, I'm not losing him. Bang, I'm right back here. I didn't lose anything. Just like the other stuff that we're doing. It's high reward, low risk. But if he doesn't get knocked out with that, the fight's over, he doesn't tap out or whatever, what's he going to do? Well, he's certainly not going to leave his body that vulnerable for me to do that again. If he does, I'll do it again. But he's going to start trying to bring his arms down, trying to protect his body, kind of the, <clears throat> that sucks, kind of the motion. Which means that now his face is vulnerable. And I could now go back to chipping with the elbows again, but, you know, sometimes I don't want to play back and forth. I want to go for the finish right off the bat. As soon as I feel those arms come down, my left hand is going to reverse underneath his body. My left side, my lats, and my ribs are going to drop on the side of his temple. I'm going to sprawl my left hip out. So we're right here, turn this over, and I sprawl. All I'm doing, guys, is driving off my right knee and my toes to push his face away from me. Once we get to this point, once we get to this point, all I'm going to do is swim my hand to the inside of his arm, put my forehead on the mat, and drop my weight into it. You can go palm to palm on the north-south choke here, but it's really not going to give you any benefit because I'm not pulling. All I'm doing is sinking down, pushing my shoulder into his throat. And if he's so worried about getting his liver kneed into oblivion, that head and neck is going to be very, very vulnerable. So from the beginning, knee on belly, chipping with that elbow on the way down as I put my right knee in my pocket. 
If I need to, I can shift on the elbows a little bit. If I feel like he hasn't given me enough of a target, if his arms are too low, it's up to you to come to judgment call. Post with both hands, come up just enough, but I can smash that knee into his ribs, drop back down immediately. Now it's a judgment call. Do I keep throwing elbows? Do I drop the knee in again? Or if he's like, oh, that sucks, stop doing that. Now I drop my hand underneath, sprawl, turn his head. Now my right hand comes up, circles to the outside. Put your forehead on the mat. I don't want to be up here when you can start either framing or if you start panicking and cheating, jamming his fingers to my eyes. Either way, I'm making sure I put my arm, I'm sorry, my head outside his arm where he can't reach it. Scoot myself down and back. You can do it one-handed or two-handed, but either way, push, don't pull. Comments, questions? So we're here, here, here. I can shift the elbows if I want to. If you've already given me enough of a target, I might skip, start throwing my knees in. And I can commit hard to those, that can be a finish right there. If it's not a finish, but he decides to protect his body, sprawl, turn his head, circle my arms to the outside, forehead on the mat, and scoot back to the cage. Good point. What I don't want, guys, is for him to be trained to face me, right? I've got options here. I'll do other stuff as he does. It's not the end of the world. But for right now, for our purposes, I want to make my lat and my ribs drive into the side of his head that way so he turns to look away from me. Once I get to this point, now I can try to sink my weight back, hand on the mat, do myself in. Very, very, very difficult choke to attack. Comments, questions? Coach, anything like that? Pretty good? Tap quick. One, two, three.